In my previous video, I implemented a basic MCP server using Python and connected it with Cloud Desktop app. In today's video, I am going to set up the MCP Inspector. MCP Inspector is a tool that can help you when you are working with MCP servers and MCP clients. If you are building your own server and you want to test these servers locally in your system, then you can use MCP Inspector. So how we can set up the MCP Inspector? Here I am using MCP Python SDK to build MCP server. First of all, I will create a sample MCP server. For that, I created a directory, then enabled virtual environment. Here, I am not using UV. I am using pip install for the MCP library installation. In the requirements.txt file, I specified MCP and MCP CLI libraries. Using the command pip install, I install these libraries. Once the installation is completed, create a python file called server.py and add the tools and resources. I had already created the python script. Here we have two simple tools and two resources. The tool called add is for adding two numbers and the tool open google search searches the given query in google and open the results in the browser. We have two resources here. One is called get greetings and another is get user data. The resource get greeting returns a string hello username and the resource get user data returns json data with user details. Now we can test these tools and resources using mcp inspector. Before setting up mcp inspector, make sure you have installed node.js. I had already installed node.js. To run mcp inspector, use this command mcp dev server.py. Basically, this will run the mcp server in debug mode using mcp inspector. Once you run this command, the application will run in port 6274. If you open this URL on your browser, you can see the UI. Here you can see different options, transport type, command, arguments and other options. I selected transport type as STDIO and click this connect button to connect this server. As you can see, the status was connected and we can see various tabs here, resources, prompts, tools, etc. When we click on the resource tab, you can see the resources and resources templates. In the resource template, we can see the list of resources that we added. The resource get greetings will just return a JSON with string as hello username. So it accepts a username. So we need to provide a username. I am giving the username as coder and it gives the JSON output as expected. Now we can check the next resource which is get user data. Here we need to provide the user id and it will return a json with some sample data. So you can add and check different resources here. Resources are the way to expose data to LLMs. They are very similar to get endpoints in a REST API. They provide data but shouldn't perform significant computation. Basically, these are like get endpoints. Now we can check the tools. Once you click on the tools tab and then list tools, it will list all the available tools. We have two tools here that are open google search and add. We can test these tools. Once we click on the open google search tool, you can see a window to give the input query. I am giving the query as what is generative AI. It searches that query in Google and open the result in the Chrome browser. So this tool works properly. Now we can check the next tool which is add which adds two numbers. It accepts two values a and b and gives the sum of two values. So both of these tools were working properly. This way we can add multiple tools and test using the mcp inspector. So basically tools let LLMs take actions through your server. Unlike resources, 
tools are expected to perform computation and have side effects. Now we can check prompts. Prompts are reusable templates that help LLMs interact with your server efficiently. To add prompts, you can use this library function. So I am going to add a new sample prompt which is debug error. Once you add the prompt, reconnect the server and check the prompts tab. Here you can see the list of prompts that we added. Here we can add error code as input and it will generate a prompt template that we can use and pass to LLM. You can add different prompts template that we can use with the LLM. Here MCP sampling lets servers ask for LLM completion through the client. This means your server can send a request to the LLM and receive a completion to continue solving a task. Using sampling, servers can ask for AI help when needed. This enables an MCP server to use AI to make smart decisions based on available information. Sampling also allows for a human to be involved in the process. The user can review and approve both the request before sending it to the LLM. So once the server requests for LLM sampling, here it lists the request for approval. Routes. Here you can configure the root directories that the server can access. For example, your local directories that used by the server. The message format that uses to communicate with the client and server is JSON RPC. So these are the different formats. For sending request, the format is like this. And for response, the format is like this. Here you can see the different transport types. STDIO, SSE, Streamable HTTP. As per model context protocols current documentation, it supports two transport types. One is STDIO, which is standard input output. Another is SSE, which is server side events. STDIO is basically used when the MCP server is used as a sub process of an LLM or a tool runner or if the communication happens via command line. We can use STDIO when building command line tools, implementing local integrations, needing simple process communication, or working with shell scripts. Server side events. SSE transport enables server to client streaming with HTTP POST request for client to server communication. We can use SSE when only server to client streaming is needed, working with restricted networks, implementing simple updates, etc. In this MCP inspector, I tried to connect the MCP server using the SSE transport type, but I faced some issues and showed connection error. When I checked the logs, it showed a connection refused error. I think it's something related to node. It cannot connect to the specific port. So I tried different things, but it didn't fix the issue. But I got a workaround for this issue. So what I did was, I ran the MCP server individually with a specific port and with transport type SSE. Then I used the MCP inspector to inspect that transport type. I will show you how to do this. So in the MCP server python script, while creating the MCP server instance, I specified a port here. Here I add the port number as 8000. Also added this script where we run the MCP server with transport type SSE. Now run the server by using the command python server.py. It will run the server in the specified port which is 8000. In the MCP inspector, switch the transport type to SSE and add the URL with the port 8000. Now we can connect the server and we can test the tools and resources. Also, if you try to load this SSE URL in the browser, you can see the message like this. So this way you can run the server with SSE transport type. I will share the script in the description box so that you can set it up. So that's all about today's video. If you found this helpful, please consider to subscribe and like the video. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video. Bye.